No role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, what I want to do is talk about something that we, we get a lot of questions on this because... You know, there are a lot of people who, because of the the job market right now, a lot of people are leveling up in their career. A lot, they're, they're taking steps mm-hmm. either in their same organizations or they're leaving organizations and using it as an opportunity to move up in terms of more responsibility, um, more people reporting to them, you know, stuff like that. And And what's happening is we're seeing a lot of people who are going from leading a group of individual contributors to leading a group of leaders. And there is no question there's a lot of overlap when it comes to how you do those roles. You know, the, you know, being able to do one will give you a lot of the skills that you need, need in order to be able to do the other. But there are definitely some differences in how leaders lead other leaders versus how they lead individual contributors. And so what this kind of brought up is, is the need to have kind of a, a series of episodes around what does it look like if you are a leader of leaders and how that differs from just leading individual contributors. And so um, what I want to do is kind of go through for the next five weeks, I want to talk about five different ways that leaders of leaders their, how their roles differ and vary from just leaders of individual contributors, because I think there's a lot of nuance in here, and, and I think it's important to kind of address some of these things on, on how some of the skills you can take with you, but some of them you have to kind of develop um, and, and not just assume that what worked right for you before is going to work right for you going forward. What, what do you think about this? You know, I love the idea, and, and to your point, there's a lot of um, movement going on right now, but I even think as a refresher... Um, you know, with so many things that have happened over the last couple of years here and the constant evolution and increasing of the bar from a leadership engagement standpoint, I always think it's good to revisit what exactly is the responsibility when you are a leader of leaders and what are the, you know, what are the traps that you can fall into? What are the things you have to be conscious of? Uh, and how are you as a leader of leaders continuing to, you know, up, up, upgrade your own um, you know, perspectives and, and learnings about uh, around leadership and leadership theory. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I think it'll be a great, a great series with a lot of really good dialogue. Yeah, I agree with that too. Um, you know, one of the things that we like here on Hacking Your Leadership is acronyms. And, uh, you know, the work that we, that we kind of put into this in advance has led us to a, a nice acronym when it comes to this five episode series. Um, and it, the acronym spells out the word space, S-P-A-C-E for the five episodes. And so Lorenzo, why don't you tell um, audience, our audience a little bit about about why um, why that's important and, and, and not just a, a made up word, but it's it really is imperative on how you lead as a leader of leaders. Well, I think first and foremost, most people do not. When you say the word micromanage, while it may seem or be defined differently from different people, most people associate that with a negative thing. People sure. don't want to be micromanaged, and if you have a responsibility uh, of leadership and you have a team of people that you're responsible for, you, you know you want the flexibility and the capability to lead that team. Like it, it's kind of uh, if you trust me to, with the job, if you if you give me this level of responsibility, then also give me the space to do the job, the, the right. space to go learn, the space to be myself. And so that was one of the things that as I've been having conversations with people about being a leader of leaders that I, that I found myself saying over and over again is like creating space, giving people the space, allowing there to be space. And I, so I kind of laughed to myself and I was like, well, Maybe there's a way to kind of tie that into some of the dialogue we're going to have. And of course, you know, like all natural things happened, it turned itself into an acronym uh, that I think is going to be helpful. But uh, yeah, I, I think through all of this dialogue, a lot of what we're talking about is exactly that, allowing people to have the space to go out and lead their people um, and, and, and try things and figure things out and sometimes make mistakes, but learn from those mistakes and allow them to be themselves so that as a leader of leaders, you're able to find themes of their behaviors um, or elements of their leadership that you can address uh, without having to be over their shoulder every five or 10 minutes. Yeah, I agree with that totally. And and keep in mind, when we say space, this isn't like uh, more is better. This is a bell curve, obviously. It's, it's not more space is better. It's the right amount of space. And too little and too much is obviously a negative thing. You got to make sure it's the right amount. And so the 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 space acronym that we're going to go through one letter for each of the the next five weeks. Um, the S is set clear expectations. The P is personalize the support. The A is accept your role. 
The C is curiously question, and the E is encourage risk. And so on um, on each on each Monday episode, we're going to go through a different one of these. And then if you have questions about this or follow-ups that you want us to kind of dive into based on what you hear on Mondays, send us a DM on, on Instagram and we'll address those questions on our Thursday episode. Our thoughtful Thursday for each week will be kind of an addressing of, of listener feedback and questions on whatever that Monday episode is. So without further ado, let's talk about setting clear expectations for the first episode of this series. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, it's the right thing to do at the beginning. And when you hear set expectations, you tend to think of like, well, somebody's telling me what I have to do or somebody's telling me what needs to get done. And in this type of space as a leader of leaders, this is really about making sure that it's clear, like what is that leader's job and, and what are they responsible for and what do they own? And also being clear about as their leader, where do you see the spaces where you can spend time with them to help develop their skill? Um, and then also like where are the times that you need to give them the ability to go out and do the work itself? And then it also means that you have to set clear expectations on what exactly is your role with them? How often do you want to follow up? What makes sense for the type of business that you're in? You know, when you have the follow up, what are the things that you're going to be asking about? You know, what, what are the goals that we're setting for ourselves and for our teams and individually? So like the setting of, of of clear expectations is not just about telling somebody or telling a leader what you need from them. It is it is kind of filling the table with all of the things that are going to be a part of this level of relationship from a professional standpoint and even to the point of how often the the, the level of engagement, the type of, of communication, you know, is it is it text messages, is it phone calls, is it face to face meetings, is it you know is is it virtual meetings, is it another platform? Like really defining all of these things is super helpful in being able to allow the leader to then go out there and do the work with a vote of confidence and an understanding of both what's expected, but also like how you're going to follow up and how you're going to make sure that that they're not only getting the work done, but that they feel a level of support. Yeah, that's so true. I also think that, you know, as as you move up in your career, the kind of sliding scale of how much of the work that you do moves away from the tactical and in, into the strategic. Now, every role has some element of strategic work and some element of tactical work. But the further up you move, the, the more you move into the strategic and less into the tactical. And when I think about that is if I'm a, a leader of leaders versus a leader of individual contributors, what that means to me is that there's going to be a lot less of defining the steps but uh, and a lot more of just defining what point A and point Z are. And so if if I am a leader of individual contributors, there could be people reporting to me who've been within an organization for three weeks or three years and, and what type of support they need or what type of information they need as far as defining what that the execution of their role looks like is going to vary from person to person. Obviously, the less time they have, the more they're going to need to be told, here's step A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. And if you're a leader of a person who's been with the organization for several years, then maybe they know a lot of that already. They don't need to be told that over and over again, um, but they still need some clear direction on making sure that the process has to be followed because there might be some, there might be you know less flexibility in the process itself as you get into a an entry level or an individual contributor role. If you're a leader of leaders, you will do a, you will do much less defining of what points B through Y are. And a lot more defining of what A and what Z are. So you align on where you are, A. This is where we are right now. Our relationship, what your capabilities are, where you've done well, what you're working on, the, the goals you've told me that you want to accomplish. That's point A. And point Z is the expectations of, of your role in terms of, of what has to be accomplished, what goals have to be met, the things that I can do to help you. That's, that's point Z. And then B through Y is kind of like, you let me know where you need support. But the rest of it is going to be expected for you to do. That would be leaving an entry-level employee high and dry if you just didn't define anything in the middle. And so, so a lot of this, a lot of these, these pointers or, or what we're going to be talking about here is going to be how do you make sure that your support is more in spirit of the 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 north star of where you want to go with somebody in spirit of whatever metrics company puts in place that you have to abide by, versus this is what you do next. And then this is what you do next. And then this is what you do next. Um, so that's kind of what how I'm kind of uh, you know interpreting this. Yeah, and I and I also 
um, add in there that with some industries and some organizations, sometimes this stuff is defined already. Like like there sure. is a, a a weekly meeting. There's an, like you're supposed to sit down with your leaders or your team x amount of times, whether it's every morning, twice a week. Like a lot of times, these the the, the expectations of connection are defined. Uh, either by an organization or maybe by the leader of the leader of the leader's boss, like who knows? So some of these things have to have to live within a framework that may already exist, and and that is what that is. And so I think that as you're clarifying the expectations, to your point, it, it is understanding as a leader of leader that that your you may be influential or you may be able to provide an opinion around the how, but really that's the leader's job. Like if you have layers of leadership. That, that leader has a team of people and their job really is to figure out the how and, and get insight and, and, and get feedback and be able to put this stuff together and say, okay, like here is to your point, the, here's the goal. This is what we're looking to achieve. Here's how we measure success. This is the, the due date or the time in which we want to have this result done by, or here's the, the goal for that result, whatever that is. Um, you know, he, here is some of the, the tools or some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the resources that you may have to go achieve that. Uh, but, but your job as the leader of people is to figure out how. And, and, and based upon how maybe experienced or tenure that leader is as a leader of leaders, that's where the expectation part uh, may look a little bit different. So if you, let's say that you have multiple leaders that you lead, one of them may be uh, extremely efficient. They may have done this job for a while. They may be very active with their team. They may just say, hey, Chris, give me the goal and give me the deadline and I'll meet you there. And, and not only will I meet you there, but I have a history of meeting that and having a team that's excited to do it and even exceeding that goal. So like your support of them or the clarifying of expectations may be that let me know how and where you want me to plug in uh, if you're hitting any hurdles or you want to get this work done versus another leader who may be leading the team for the first time where you may have to go in there and, and set the expectations around, well, here's the work, here's the goal. What questions do you have? Okay. So I know we typically, you know, we have the all, you know, team meeting on a Monday. Let's follow back up on a Wednesday. I just want to make sure that you've had some time to kind of think about your plan, see who you've collaborated with, walk me through that. So you may stay a little bit closer with that person uh, in that type of work if they're new to the work or they're building that skill but i think it's super important that you clarify that with them that, that, that they don't feel like they're being treated differently or they're being micromanaged because the way you engage with them is different than the way that you engage with somebody else who has the same title and so these are these are things that from a clarity of expectation standpoint really have to be discussed and and not just assume that they understand because that can cause a new leader to feel like maybe they're they're not doing the job they're not meeting your expectations they're they're not getting things done the way in which you want to get them done simply because your engagement model might be different for them than somebody else who has the same title right right again, again this this has to do with are you are you giving people the level of engagement that they want one person's micromanaging as another person's lack of support, right? right so right. You, yeah. you could, I could I could say I, I meet with a person at the beginning of each shift and at the end of every shift and someone else might hear that and go, you have to meet with your boss twice a day, you know? And it's like, well, no, they, I, I asked to have that. I, I want that, right? Like that's what, I, that's what I want and they meet me where I am, you know? So it, again, it, the uh, micromanaging is not defined by the by the manager. It's defined by the employee. You know, you, you get to define micromanaging based on how your boss leads you. You're, you don't get to define it for your people. Um, I, I love what you said earlier about that there's a framework in place in a lot of organizations in many roles, it's, even if you're a leader of leaders, as far as what an expectation is. And, and I will tell you, I've had situations in the past where I had to, where I, I was a leader of leaders and I had to kind of sit down with somebody and talk to them about what that means. And I'll give you a real world example of this is I had um, a, a group of leaders reporting to me and one of them did a great job with making sure that they were aligned with their individual contributors that were reported up to them. They, had, they led a team of about eight people and they had good relationships with all of them. And the company instituted this kind of like structured way of scheduling meetings with individual contributors because in a lot of pockets of the organization, they weren't getting done at all. There were some, there was a deficit of leadership in, in certain parts of the organization. There were leaders who were not meeting with their people regularly and people were kind of voicing opinions that they weren't feeling supported. And so the company said, all right, once a quarter, at least 
you need to sit down with every single one of your person. It's on the schedule. You have a, a, an hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is and you sit down with them and you go through these questions. And the one of the people that reported up to me, like they, they, they were very right in that they said, why do, I, why do I need to do this? I meet with my people way more often than this and I have a great relationship with them. They've given you feedback that says I'm amazing. This is this seems like it's 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 um going to hurt my relationship with them because it's putting this structure that I don't need. And it's like they're not wrong, but again, there's an expectation, right? And so what it comes down to is I I talked to them and made sure that they could convey to their people that this this is the organization's expectation. What you do in those meetings is completely up to you, but you put it on the schedule. And you spend some time with them one on one, and if and if it's just more of the same thing that you're already doing because that's been working for you, then you go to it. If they're giving you good feedback and they're giving me good feedback on how you're leading to them, that's all that matters to me. But you you can't not do whatever that minimum expectation is for the organization just because your workaround happens to be better. You can even say to them, you know, hey, just you know, this is our regularly scheduled meeting that the company puts in place to make sure that we're all talking, and and you can even say to them. There are, the reason this is happening is because in a lot of places in the organization, there, there are employees who don't have the great relationship that we have. And the company's trying to make sure that those people have their place to talk also. So there's a way to do it. And, and you can't just say, no, I do this well already. I don't need to abide by whatever the company policy is. Yeah, you know, I think it's a great point. And, and I think what I appreciate you talking talk through was like the, the level of transparency and honest dialogue. Because I think that when, when setting expectations is at its best, when it comes to being a leader of leaders, that when you say like, you know, um, what else do you need? Or, or, or are these expectations clear? And if the answer is like one word answer is yes, it's clear. Or yes, I understand. Then, then it almost feels like, like, like it doesn't feel like the relationship is good enough to, to have the, the honest dialogue needs to happen. My preference right. is somebody who says, Oh, the, the expectation is absolutely clear, but like, but but what about this part of it? Or is it okay with this? Or here's what I'm thinking right now. Like, like to, to move quickly from the expectation to the ideation phase and their and their willingness and want to continue the dialogue. Uh, because what that shows is this this idea that like we're in this together. This is teamwork. This is collaboration. While while on paper you may be my boss. Uh, we both understand that my success is your success and vice versa. So this is not about you tell me what to do or you're clear on an expectation and I walk away with it. This is about you're clear about what needs to happen. And if I'm thinking of anything or I have an approach or if I have any questions, they're coming out very, very quickly. And they're coming out in a way that allows us to have continuing dialogue where, again, it's not about uh, a, a leader of leader telling somebody what to do, but it's saying like, cool, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. It's clear. And that, and if that I'm not clear with the expectation that we can go over that right now. Right. I love that because it also allows you to kind of disarm a conversation when it comes to bringing up things that the company wants you to talk about. So if all of my interactions with one of my employees are ones that I set up, even if I have a great relationship with them, there's going to be some assumption about things if I bring up a topic. If I start talking about something in a meeting that I scheduled, then in their mind, they're going to be thinking, why is this topic coming up right now? Like, why, why are we talking about this right now? Even if it's not, they're not going to assume negative, but they're going to be thinking about it. But if 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 I say, so here's a great example. Um, I was asked by um, a, a person that I report to, to have a meeting with them. And they were very quick to say, um, I'm meeting with everybody. And this is your part of the schedule. And then from that moment on, I didn't think about it. I was like, oh, okay, they're meeting with everybody. But if it's just me that's being met with, in my mind, I start thinking, I wonder why they're meeting with just me. Like, I don't assume that something's wrong, but there's a part of me that wonders whether or not everything's okay or whether we're going to have a, a tough conversation about something. And, and so, you know, using whatever that company structure is to go over things that the company wants you to talk about or ask about or have conversations on is a really great way to, to disarm that particular part of the conversation and say, we're talking about this because the expectation is that we have a conversation about it. It doesn't mean I'm not committed to it, but it means you don't have to read into why I'm bringing it up right now. I'm bringing it up because it's my job to bring it up. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. The One Minute Hack. 
All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, here's what I want you to do. If you're a leader of leaders, the next time you are going to be sitting down with either one or all of your people to define expectations about anything, it could be something that is uh, you know, a short-lived thing or, or a strategy going forward. If you're defining expectations for anything, that conversation needs to include an ask of those people for them to repeat to you what those expectations were and to to articulate to you what they perceive the potential hurdles are or roadblocks are or or places where they could get tripped up. Based on their answers to those questions, that will help you define the level of support that you need to give to them by asking them, how can I support in making that happen? So if they define, they, they define the expectations to you, they tell you where they see potential issues with it, and then you say, what can I do to help alleviate those or to help move through those, then they can define how you meet them there and solve those problems together. That way, the people who need a little bit more support are getting it, and the people who want to be left alone and be given that space are able to be left alone and given that space. And no one feels like they're unsupported or micromanaged. Yeah, I think it's a great one minute hack. And it's just a reminder about the importance of dialogue and clarity. And when you're setting expectations, um, making sure that you have room to engage and discuss um, and, and proactively doing that. Yeah, for sure. This is, again, the first of five parts of this of this series. And so there's going to be a lot more that we go into when it comes to what are the next steps when it comes to being a leader of leaders. Um, but this is absolutely intentionally the very first one because if you've not set clear expectations and defined what your level of support is going to be with them, um, th- you can't really expect them to perform in a way um, that makes them feel comfortable with it and, and brings their best self. Yeah. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time.